G'day mates, the video you're about to watch is of me tearing down this really old school Respironics ventilator. Now I put this video up a few times on YouTube and then I've taken it down shortly after. And the reason being is I think a few of you might be missing the point of the video, whatever that is. The point is not for me to get clicks guys. I don't care about the clicks. I just find it fascinating to go back and have a look at some of these older CPAP machines to see what was happening, to try and unpiece this story. Is it all Philip's fault? Or did Philip's just inherit a bad seed when they took over Respironics? This is what fascinates me. I enjoy taking things apart. I enjoy doing a bit of an investigation. So if you don't like it, that's cool. You don't need to watch it. After taking apart this device, which you'll see shortly, I mean, it's clear to me that Respironics were using a hell of a lot of PEPUR foam. It's the same foam inside these, these devices 20 plus years ago. And there's no doubt after seeing the condition of the foam, I know it's 20 plus years old. I know foam's not designed to last forever, but there's no doubt that they would have been having the same problems that Philips are having now with the foam breaking down. And I feel there was probably a big cover up at some point. There would have been biomedical engineers taking apart fixing devices and going, what's going on here? The foam would have been breaking down. So, so that's an important point. You know, when Philips came in and took them over, they've probably taken over a company that had some foam skeletons in their closet. All right, now the next point is, how many of these ventilators, these old Respironics ventilators, even some of the Philips ones maybe, who knows, are being used in hospitals around the world today? How safe are they? Um, I personally feel that the FDA probably has their hands tied. They're, they're caught between a rock and a hard place right now because what do they do? How do you recall all these ventilators that could be un unsafe? They probably are. But at the same time, it's a lesser of two evils, isn't it? You've got one person who needs a ventilator to live, but at the same time, you're treating them with a, with a medical device that is probably toxic and unsafe. So it's challenging, guys. But look, this is what the channel's about. Let's go back, have a look at some of these Respironics devices prior to Philips, see what's inside them. Enjoy. All right, kids, happy Friday. Hold on to your hats. This is an old Respironics BiPAP. So this is well before the days when Philips came in and took them over. Let's take her apart and have a look inside it. This is the first time I've had a look at it as well. And it's gonna be an eye opener. All right. Now I'm not, I've never taken one of these apart before. So just, Bear with me as we go, all right? It's just a, an absolute beast. Like, look at this, look at this, <laughs> look at this steel assembly. Holy cow, isn't it just insane? What a beast. All right, I'm gonna flip it over. I did take a few screws out just to make it a bit easier on, our, on us. Now at the front here, I'll just show you that quickly. It has this little bit. They call it the whisper cap, and that is just basically a foam cap. There you go, graphic filter pad on the front there. So that's the intake. All right, let's have a look. Wow. Holy cow. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Oh man. And this is, I'm not doing this guys, this is how it is. All right, I'm not, it's not, I'm not breaking it up as I go. This is just how it is inside the device. This is how it is. <sighs> That's it. Fuck. <laughs> we are not being told the whole story. They are in a massive pickle. Oh man, good luck. I mean, this is too much for me on a Friday. I gotta go and chill out. 
Thanks for watching. Bye.